Yeah, good evening, guys. So please type in the chat box. Am I audible? Good evening, Ravan, Sukumar, all of you. Hi, Mudit. So please confirm the audio and video once. Hi, Chinmay. Audio and video are fine, right? Okay. So let's start the session without any delay. Fine. So in this session, we are going to look at A standard cycles. Basically, if you see the syllabus of uh, gate examination, in gate examination, for in case of IC engines, we have only the A standard cycles. Okay. So we'll see A standard cycles, and if time permits, maybe in at the last part of today's session, or maybe in the beginning of tomorrow's session, we'll also see certain performance characteristics. Okay. So that could be good actually. So we'll be looking at A standard cycles. And if you see last lecture, in last lecture, basically I have revised a bit of basic thermodynamics. Like we have seen the energy conservations, energy in minus energy out is actually equal to change in energy of the system. We have seen these things, okay? And also one important thing, I I should actually sir, एक छोटा सा doubt था. ठीक है पूछिए कोई दिक्कत नहीं. Okay? Now let's see if this is delta E of the system. Then let's see. We also have seen this equations. TDS is equal to du plus PDV. Okay, and TDS is equal to dH minus VDP. Of course, you know these two. These two are written in intensive properties so that you can apply them for any system. Okay. Now, uh, uh, sir, can you please explain irreversible and irreversible process? I know the definition, but not understand its significance. ठीक है. मैं आपको explain करता हूँ. Okay. So, लेकिन just पांच मिनट दीजिए. Now, if you see, these are the two equations. These two equations are actually very powerful equations. Okay. We use them almost at every place. So, and also if you Uh, see carefully. In case of adiabatic process and all, we have seen if it, the process is reversible, dS is equal to zero. And for any process, for any process, we have seen dS is del Q by T plus delta S generation. We have seen that heat and entropy generation, delta S generation, both are path functions actually. Okay. And we have seen in last case that if the process is reversible adiabatic. Then this dS is actually zero because del Q will be zero because of adiabaticness and del S generation will be zero because of irreversibility. Okay, so irreversible adiabatic processes, which are very much important for us, irreversible adiabatic processes are isentropic. We have seen in last class also isentropic. Okay, so these are isentropic and clearly. But there was need not be that too. But if, like if the process is isentropic, the process need not be irreversible adiabatic. क्योंकि हमने last class में देखा, if you have this equation, ये zero होने के लिए ये दोनों zero होने की जरूरत नहीं है, okay? So because you can see del Q by T, if this is negative for example, and this is equal to delta S generation, like in the case of irreversible heat ejections, in the case of irreversible heat rejections you can see so even if there is some heat rejection even if the process is not adiabatic still ds can be actually zero depending upon the heat is uh, flowing out or coming in all this stuff okay hi good evening all of you so now this equation or basically rather than this these two equations we are going to use pretty much in our cycles analysis okay so in today's class we'll look at a standard cycles but before that i just want to tell you one thing If you have a constant volume process for ideal gas, okay, for ideal gas, for ideal gas, normally if you uh, see in general the change in internal energy, you might have seen in relations, thermodynamic relations, which is again one very powerful chapter. The because of time constraint, we were not able to discuss yesterday, but uh, this is actually very powerful chapter. You know, in this chapter we have equations which are called Maxwell equations. Maxwell equations. Have you all seen this? These equations are given by Glenn Maxwell, okay? Who is the all-around of Australian cricket team? Correct. Are these the equations the same? No, okay. So Maxwell equations are one very powerful equations because the reason is I'll just tell you. See here, one equation I'll derive, like you know, TDS is equal to du plus PDV, and this you can write it as du is equal to TDS minus PDV. So this is of the form m dx plus n dy. Okay. So if you see, if there is any property which is depending on x and y, normally a bit of math here. So dz can be written as 
dou z by dou x at constant y into dx plus dou z by dou y at constant x into dy actually you know this is simply called the chain rule of differentiation okay so whenever you write this normally there is a point which you generally know if z is function of x comma y if you calculate dou square z by dou x dou y or if you calculate dou square z by dou y dou x means actually in this function first if you differentiate with respect to y and then if you differentiate with respect to x or if you differentiate with first with respect to x and then with respect to y the result won't change okay so because of that you can understand one thing if i can write this as this term as m dx plus n dy this is some function of x comma y this is also some function of x comma y now clearly the partial derivative of this with respect to y will actually give me dou square z by dou y dou x correct and partial derivative of dou n by dou x n with respect to x will give me dou square z by dou x dou y but clearly you can understand these two are equal always okay if these two are always equal then definitely your dou m by dou y should be equal to dou n by dou x if the function is exact okay so these are called exact differentials like all the properties basically okay you see exact differential yeah so basically if you see volume pressure temperature entropy all these things are basically point functions so if they are point functions they are exact differentials that's why we denote with small d if they are not exact we denote with del actually like how we have denoted here okay so you can see these are del symbols because these two are path functions okay so in maths it's a notation that non exact differentials are denoted with the symbol del or sometimes in some books you also see d with a cut on the top okay so anyway now this are point functions so if z is any property then clearly this condition has to hold good okay so if you are applying this here since internal energy is a point function then clearly for internal energy to be a point function if you equate this let me see du is equal to tds minus pdv actually this if you compare with m dx plus n dy form you can understand m is equal to temperature x is equal to specific entropy n is equal to minus p and y is equal to specific volume so if you apply this condition dou m by dou y is equal to dou n by dou x you can understand of course when you are differentiating with respect to y it's a partial derivative so x is constant here and y is constant here okay when you are differentiating because it's partial derivative clearly so if you do dou m by dou y dou t by dou v at constant entropy is same as dou n by dou x which is minus dou p by dou s at constant volume so this is the first maxwell equation clear so properties are always exact differentials and point functions is also always yeah basically properties are always point functions in general okay that's why okay heat work these are not properties they are path functions entropy generation is also not a property clear that's why so you can understand this this is the first maxwell equation like this you can generate for uh, four maxwell equations total one is from the second equation of tds another is from the gibbs function and helmholtz functions you see g is h minus ts and u or a is equal to u minus ts this is helmholtz function and this is gibbs function basically from these three equations you can also bring other three equations okay the main reason why maxwell equations are very much important is because maxwell equations connect those properties which are measurable and which are non measurable okay like for example internal energy you cannot measure you can calculate okay entropy you cannot measure you can calculate entropy okay but whereas temperatures volume pressure these things you can measure directly okay like for example if i give you some container of gas you can actually measure temperature pressure volume but you cannot measure entropy directly you can calculate entropy actually okay so that's why this equations connect in this equation delta t is measurable delta v is measurable delta p is measurable so every maxwell equation connects non measurable properties with measurable properties so that means maxwell equations help you in actually calculating unknowns which are not measurable directly so that's why these equations are very much powerful actually you might have also seen in thermodynamic relations du change in internal energy for any system is cv dt plus temperature times dou p by dou t at constant volume minus pressure times dv so this is the change in specific internal energy for any system it can be ideal gas whatever this part for ideal gas will be zero for ideal gas this expression is equal to zero okay you can clearly see if you have ideal gas pv is equal to rt so t into dou p by dou t 
this equation can be written as p is equal to r t by v so do p by do t at constant volume if you take volume constant and if you differentiate this with respect to temperature you will have r by v minus p is what you have and r t by v is nothing but p minus p so clearly you will have zero here okay so this term is actually zero only for ideal gas this is the actual internal energy change specific internal energy change for any system in general this can be very easily derived actually okay if you take temperature as function of or specific entropy as function of temperature and volume and if you use maxwell equations and by comparing you can easily get this similarly dh change in specific enthalpy is cp dt plus v minus t times of dou v by dou t at constant pressure times dp so this is how in general for any substance the specific internal energy generally depends upon temperature and specific volume so u is generally function of temperature comma specific volume and specific enthalpy is function of temperature comma pressure which you can see here directly okay so that's how we generally have lot of things because it depends upon change in temperature and also change in pressure but anyway for ideal gas these two terms will go to zero and for ideal gas du is always written as cvdt and dh is always written as cpdt okay that's why in our cycles whenever we are using constant volume process or constant pressure process change in enthalpy will directly use as cpdt and change in internal energy in case of constant volume process will directly use as cvdt clear yaha tak sabko clear okay did you all understand this how this equation is coming okay just from the simple bit of maths that's it okay yes because many students they try to mug up the maxwell equations no need of mugging up if you know this it just takes you half minute or maybe 1 2 minutes to just uh, think get these things sir thoda slow theek hai these are related with state postulates yes correct maxwell equations are related with state postulates and you can measure entropy which is not measurable directly clear many students have this doubt actually okay here when you are writing do m by do y do n by do x normally people remember this m dx plus n dy because x comes before y so m should come before n so m dx plus n dy combination is what you have but many people they make some mistake here when you are writing this okay so just to keep this in mind i would like to tell you one word netflix so please keep this word in mind okay so that if you have this word in mind please remember this n and x combination do n by do x if you know one you can write other obviously okay so just remember this word for writing this form correctly because students generally they put x here and y here or if four options are given confusingly they'll just easily get confused okay so that need not be there just remember this word n and x combination so that always you can put it correctly okay now let's move on to i just want to tell you one more thing for constant volume process we know tds is equal to du plus pdv okay and if volume is constant specific volume of course for specific you know uh, in general this system properties this dv is actually zero tds is equal to for ideal gas you write for ideal gas again so for ideal gas you know cv dt because actual expression for du is this but for ideal gas this part is zero so you'll get cv dt you can understand one thing dt by ds is equal to t by cv this is for a constant volume process okay so in a constant volume process your dt by ds at constant volume is always equal to t by cv and here in the constant pressure process for constant pressure process for constant pressure process where p is equal to constant you can see tds is equal to dh minus vdp and clearly if p is constant this term is zero so tds is equal to cp dt so dt by ds of constant pressure process is equal to t by cp clearly here okay so t by cp now clearly you know cp is always greater than cv because you can actually prove this using again constant pressure process and constant volume process heat acquired all this stuff but right now i am not doing as of now you know cp by cv is gamma this is always greater than 1 so cp is greater than cv okay please keep it here actual equation for cp minus cv is you might have seen this tv beta square by kt this is the actual expression and again for ideal gas this becomes r for ideal gas 
your Cp minus Cv is always a fixed value for a given gas. Okay, but actually, if you take any substance, so it's really hard to mug up thermodynamic relation formulas. I no need to mug up here. Yeah. You just get to know this logic. That's it. Okay. Even these things are not very tough, okay? They are very much easy, actually. I don't have time, uh, you know, unfortunately, otherwise I would have dared you. It takes hardly uh, some five to six minutes again, okay? So, anyway, see here. So, this is the actual equation. This equation is called Mayer's equation normally, okay? You can derive this Mayer's equation where beta is called volumetric expansivity. These all are all properties of substances, okay? So, expansivity. So beta is actually 1 by V into dou V by dou T at constant pressure. And KT, isothermal compressibility, isothermal compressibility, which is like again, KT is equal to minus 1 by V dou V by dou P at constant temperature. Okay, so this is what you have. And normally for ideal gas, if you calculate these things, beta will be 1 by T, KT will be 1 by P. If you substitute here, you'll get this R. Okay, so right now, anyway, you might have seen all these things in basic thermodynamics. Now, why I have taught you this and this equations? Why it's important? Because normal in case of auto cycles and diesel cycles, when we are doing TS diagram analysis, okay, these two equations gives you a bit of understanding. If you have TS, Let's say, for example, from some particular state, a gas is going under constant volume and also under constant pressure. Can you tell me, out of these two, which is constant volume and which is constant pressure? Let's say, for example, AB, which is constant volume out of those two? Which is constant volume out of those two? Let's say this is same. This is same for both. Okay. So, this temperature, this entropy change is same which is constant volume, A or B. A, correct? Because you can see when Cp is greater than Cv, at any point T by Cp is less than T by Cv. And these terms are nothing but dT by dS. What is the meaning of this? If you take dT by dS, slope of constant pressure, since Cp is larger as compared to Cv, this curve rises slowly means the slope of this curve is less generally so this is constant pressure and this curve is actually constant volume constant volume okay so that's why when two curves are starting from the same point clearly the constant volume curve goes up fast as compared to constant pressure this is a bit important when you are trying to compare auto and diesel cycles okay so is this clear to all of you till this point okay so just type in the chat box everyone is this clear to all of you till here sukumar all around romeo avi mudit shreya ravan syed shashank chinmay i couldn't read names are going fine okay now let us see in today's session we'll talk about a bit of basics of ic engine cycles we'll talk about basic terminology We'll discuss auto, diesel, and dual cycles. Of course, these are the things in syllabus. And if I think today time won't permit. Like in Kalmane, uh, first 10 15 minutes, I'll discuss on engine uh, performance and all a bit. Okay. So, indicated powers. So, what are different types of powers? All these things we'll discuss. Some that could be helpful for you if some of you are writing ESC prelims or others. Okay. ISRO, things like that. Now, let's see in IC engine cycles. We all know generally the piston movement. We have the IC for getting engines as of now. So, if you see, normally if you have a link which is connected, then clearly, you know, it's an inversion of the four bar chain. Then we have a crank which actually rotates about this. Okay, so you have this, then you have the crank like this, which can actually rotate about any particular point. Then you have this connecting rod. And also piston. Okay, so you got this piston. Uh, I think this line is 
mixed up just a minute fine and uh, this connecting odd let us put it come fully okay so you have this connecting odd and this is the gudgeon pin that connects the piston now clearly you know when this rotates at certain angular velocity this piston moves at certain speed okay so it moves at certain speed now clearly the maximum position of this piston or the highest position of this piston comes when this crank pin comes to this particular point and the minimum position occurs when the pin comes here okay so these are the two extreme positions and normally when the pin is actually here this piston will be at the topmost position and at that point the velocity of the piston is zero and that is called the top dead center similarly in the rotation in the continuation of the rotation when the pin comes here this piston reaches the bottom most point and it's called the top dead center clearly okay so we define two things which are top dead center or sometimes it's uh, in case of horizontal engines you call this as inner dead center and bottom dead center or outer dead center it basically tells you whether the pin is in between connecting out and crank or maybe out that's it okay so bdc or outer dead centers so these are two extremes in piston movement in piston movement extremes in piston movement and clearly there are a lot of things in cams and all you might have seen this can actually go under a simple harmonic motion or different motions can be given to this piston by giving different types of rotation to this uh, crank actually okay so extremes in piston position now if you see stroke stroke so this word stroke is actually very much important it actually tells you one complete movement between two extremes okay so the moment or the distance between two extreme positions of the piston two extreme positions of the piston the distance between the two extreme positions of the piston it may be between top dead center and bottom dead center or maybe between inner dead center and outer dead center now clearly let's say this diameter is a d then the volume which is swept by the piston in a stroke is called swept volume so volume swept by the piston by the piston in a stroke in a stroke if stroke is denoted with l for example then this swept volume vs is nothing but pi by 4 d square is the area and into this l gives you this clear, uh, swept volume actually okay and what is this displacement volume this word is actually a bit important all your engines what you, whatever the numbers you see on your vehicles bikes cars everything is this displacement volume so this is nothing but n times vs where this n is number of cylinders that's it number of cylinders in the engine okay so when you have certain number of cylinders so like for example you say normally cars have 1200 cc things like that then it's like every engine has some 300 cc and you have four engines in general or maybe 200 cc each engine and you have six six cylinders okay so this is what you can have now when you come to the horizontal engine this configuration will be tilted so clearly you will also have this uh, swept volume displacement volume stroke everything and also we'll define one thing which is called the clearance volume clearance volume clearance volume so clearance volume is nothing but if you have the cylinder head like this in which the piston is moving you can see if you have the piston here normally this much clearance won't be there but just I am drawing it to show you things that's it okay so let's say this is your piston and you have the connecting rod like this maybe connecting rod is like this okay now if this is the top dead center TDC then clearly this volume which is present is actually called clearance volume so it's the volume between the cylinder head and the extreme position of the piston when the piston is at top dead center or maybe inner dead center okay so you can see volume between cylinder head this is normally denoted with vc this is vd of course displacement and this is vs swept volume okay just this basic terminologies are helpful for you in denoting when you are dealing with maths okay so some bit of equations and all in cycles it is helpful so clearance volume is volume between 
सिलेंडर हेड एंड द टॉप ऑफ द पिस्टन एंड द टॉप ऑफ पिस्टन वेन पिस्टन इज एट बी डी सी वेन पिस्टन इज एट सॉरी टॉप डेट सेंटर और इनर डेट सेंटर क्लियर ओके नाउ इफ यू टाइट टू रिलेट सर्टन रेशियोज एक्चुअली वी एक्चुअली हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड कंपेशन रेशियो आई विल डिफाइन दिस रेशियोज फर्स्ट सो दैट दिस आर जस्ट मैथमेटिकल टर्म्स यू कैन टेक अप कंपेशन रेशियो विच इज इक्वल टू आर टोटल वॉल्यूम डिवाइडेड बाय द क्लियरेंस वॉल्यूम विच इज टोटल वॉल्यूम इज नथिंग बट क्लियरेंस वॉल्यूम लेट्स स्वेप्ट वॉल्यूम बाय वी सी विच इज वन प्लस वी एस by vc this is one thing and second thing you also have the clearance ratio clearance ratio we don't talk much generally in this case of in in, uh, in our ic engines part of gate but actually when you're talking about reciprocating compressors this clearance ratio plays a very much important role okay so when uh, i think after uh, refrigeration and air conditioning we are going to spend a lecture on air and gas compressors then we'll see the effect of this clearance ratio and in terms of polytropic efficiency or volumetric efficiencies this plays a very important role okay so c is nothing but vc by vs actually so these are the two ratios which i would like to tell you at this point of time okay so compression ratio and the clearance ratio depending upon the volumes what i have told you now let's get into the ic engine stuff and let's see how things happen okay so general ic engine cycle ic engine cycle so you should know this then under what assumptions you can generate auto cycle from this and also diesel cycle from this we'll come to know okay so first of all let us see this general actual ic engine cycles then for our easiness how we are converting actual cycles into a standard cycles that we will see okay so see here for explaining you this i'll take the help of a piston i mean i'll take the help of a yeah piston okay maybe it's moving in this guide ways okay i'm just enlarging the view normally some part c let's say for example piston is moving from tdc to bdc i am enlarging that part to make you understand things okay now let's say this is cylinder head now we got some valves also exhaust valve and inlet valve and depending on the type of engine you can have certain spark plugs or maybe fuel injectors anything so let's say this is maybe a fuel injector or a spark plug depending on the engine now i want to explain you the process how combustion happens and how the cycle takes place normally i'll explain you with the pv then we can convert it into ts using maths let us coincide this with cylinder head okay yes now this and cylinder head are coinciding with each other so let's say pressure versus specific volume and let's also define the conditions boundary conditions this is the bottom dead center or the outer dead center this is the outer dead center means the piston cannot move beyond this value and also piston cannot move beyond this value as well let's say this is the inner dead center okay so this is the inner dead center inner dead center outer dead center and piston is moving somewhere in between okay so let's have some piston also here okay so let's say piston is here and also let's say one more position of the piston is here this diagram takes little time in you know uh, making but you can understand things very clearly look so we have generated an axis with pressure and volume and also we have drawn this cylinder so that basically this piston can oscillate between this distance okay actually i'm very much enlarging this diagram so that you can see some movement of the piston now if this is absolute zero what happens here we'll take some reference which is patm okay so let's say this pressure which is here is p atmospheric p atmospheric p atmospheric now try to get few things here look let's say for example nothing combustion has there let's say we are starting the piston for example so initially what happens this inlet valve opens and fluid let's say for example if this is inlet inlet valve and this is exhaust valve okay and this may be spark plug or injectors depending upon injectors whatever depending upon the type of engine now for the air, when this valve opens normally the air is coming from the inlet manifold and inlet manifold is normally open to atmosphere so if you see if atmospheric air has to travel inside then clearly the pressure at this point of suction has to be less than patm yes or no will you all agree with me 
Please be with me for next 10 minutes so that once I generate this diagram, I'll deal auto, diesel, everything, maths and all easily. But understanding this diagram is crucial. So please tell me if when this valve opens, if A has to enter inside through this valve, then definitely the pressure inside the cylinder has to fall below this PATM, correct? Yes. Okay. Now let's see one thing. Now as this piston moves, this air starts coming in and because of air coming inside, the pressure keeps on gradually increasing. Okay, so the pressure keeps gradually increasing and here by this time what happens? At this point, see, it could be something like this, maybe starting from here and going till this point. Now, once you reach this point, actually in this region, Sometimes what happens actually, the air stops flowing in at this particular point, but still to allow some more air if possible, we generally don't close, close the inlet valve exactly at this point. We, uh, we actually do inlet valve closing slightly after, okay? Now, from here, once this reaches here, let's say inlet valve got closed here at this point, then this is inlet valve closure. So if this is inlet, sorry, closing, inlet valve closing. Now, if this is inlet valve closing, then clearly exhaust valve is closed, inlet valve is also closed, the air which entered the system is now like a closed system, okay? And now the piston starts moving. So in a closed system, the volume is restricted and the mass is restricted. I mean, volume is not restricted, mass is restricted. Now, there is no opening, the wall, both valves are closed. Now, if this piston starts coming back, definitely the air which is inside this cylinder starts getting compressed, okay? And if it gets compressed, then clearly what happens? your compression process starts at this point. And depending upon the type of combustion and depending upon whether it's a spark ignition or a compression ignition engines, we start the combustion at this point. And let's say, for example, combustion happens over a certain period of time like this, okay? So this is the part where combustion is actually happening. Now, during this part of the combustion, Clearly, there is a blast and clearly the, the gases which got generated here in this region will try to push the piston back. So, when they are pushing the piston back, clearly there is decrease of volume and finally it comes here, okay? So, when you open this exhaust, so let's say it's coming like this. When you just open the exhaust valve, what happens? There is some drastic drop of pressure and whatever is the remaining volume which is there, this piston will again push it out. So clearly you can see, because if the piston is actually pushing the exhaust gases, the pressure inside the cylinder will drop. That's why this line, which is actually your exhaust process, is actually having some decrease in pressure and finally it matches up with this. So that's how actually a cycle is finished. Initially, this is a suction part. The inlet valve gets closed here and here the combustion begins maybe and here it ends depending upon the type of the engine and here somewhere the exhaust valve opens and exhaust valve closes somewhere here. Okay, so EVC and also EVO. Normally, the if you go to engine details, okay, as someone was telling yesterday, AV, AV, I think, if you want to do PhD in this topic, the locations of this valve closing is one very important topic. Okay, normally there are a lot of things which depends on this valve closing and normally you might have seen in BTEC also valve timing diagrams you might have seen. Have you seen this valve timing diagrams? Did even of you see this valve timing diagrams? VTDs, which are very important for semester exams also, I guess, in some of the universities. Okay, so where to open the valve, where to close the valve, these things are pretty much important, okay? You, are, you may also have some port timing diagrams, all this, okay? But right now, anyway, just I'm trying to explain the mechanism, how things going to happen. So basically here at this point, suction begins. So as the piston moves here, air starts entering into this and clearly pressure increases because of more air coming inside. And at one particular point, when you close the inlet valve, there happens certain compression. And also at some particular point, combustion begins and combustion ends. And the combustion products will try to push the piston back. So this is the power stroke actually. And in this power stroke, so this is the power stroke actually. And in this power stroke, piston moves again towards the outer dead center and piston expands, which is generating power. And once it reaches here, approximately, depending on that, again, performance of the engine, we'll try to open the exhaust valve at some point. When you drop, when you open the exhaust valve, pressure drops. And in the exhaust process, in the sweeping process, again, the exhaust gases keeps going out to the exhaust valve and pressure starts falling down and it again comes back to the initial point. So this, as tak samaj ya. But did you understand now? Did you all understand how this cycle is actually generated with respect to this movement of the piston and opening of these valves?
Is it clear to all of you? Yes? Is this 100% clear and understood to each and every one of you? If you understand this, then doing auto, diesel, whatever is very easy, okay? Clear? Right now, because of not being in gate, I'm not discussing about this valve openings, valve closings and all, otherwise they are very interesting topics, okay? Which again, they need some 30-35 minutes of time to make you understand different physical things, okay? But right now I'm not going because our job is just to do the standard cycles in this uh, class, okay? Now, if you see in this cycle, what are the assumptions we make? Now, clearly, you know, this is suction, suction, exhaust, compression, combustion this is combustion this is power stoke and we have the exhaust okay so these are the things which you generally see normally the four strokes of the piston suction combustion power exhaust okay now to do a standard analysis it's practically not very much easy to analyze with this cycle because you know clearly you know this process is not isentropic okay because when you are compressing definitely heat gets transferred out okay because in yesterday's class also i have told you when you are using your cycle pump when you compress the air definitely inside air gets heated up and because of no insulation at all what happens air actually i mean sorry heat actually flows out okay that's why when you touch your leg to your pump you feel hotness okay so these processes are not isentropic this process is not very much you know, uh, mathematically simple process. And this suction and exhaust having the traces of this pressure curves is also not very simple. This cycle can analyze it is not Okay. So, isliye am kya karte Whenever engineers feel difficult to do something, we always go for one thing. What is that? We always do something. If when, when things are complicated, we always do something to make them simple. What are they? What are they? When things are very much complicated to solve, to solve, we always do something. Ah, let us assume, correct? We'll assume everything and make th things simple and do the simple things, correct? Assumptions, yes. Jukad karte na? Yeah, yes, we'll assume, okay? So similarly, <laughs> we'll do certain assumptions here. Clear? Uh, clear? Okay, we'll do assumptions, okay? So what are the assumptions that we are doing to analyze these cycles assumptions you know one of the most powerful assumptions that we make in fluid mechanics is flow is inviscid that's it if flow is inviscid fantastic all the nonlinear terms are i mean all the second order terms are gone now it's easy for us okay whole engineering answer on assumptions engineering never answer on assumptions only your textbooks answer on assumptions okay that's why you always take something called factor of safety or maybe irreversibilities, isentropic efficiencies, all these words come because of practicality, okay? So anyway, let's go here. Now, what are the assumptions that we make here? First, out of these processes, which do you think are the most complicated processes? Suction and exhaust. Piston is moving, pressure is changing here. It's falling below suction, below atmospheric pressure. There is some cycle. Out of these processes, suction and exhaust, and combustion and power, out of these four, for example, you can see power, compression, exhaust, and suction, which you feel is difficult to analyze, actually? Which you feel, which process you feel difficult to analyze in general? Which you feel more difficult to analyze in general? Come on, quick, time, throw us a comment. Suction, correct? Why? Or basically, I'll tell you. In this part of the cycle, mass is not constant, correct? I'll just tell you, in this part, you can see, in this part of the cycle, in this part of the cycle, mass is not constant. Here, mass is constant. At least one difficulty is gone, okay? Study m dot in, m dot out, all these things, if you see, here they are same, but actually throughout this process, mass is not constant. Suction and exhaust don't have fixed mass. Yes or no? Can you understand this? From inlet valve closing, sorry, from inlet valve closing to exhaust valve opening, mass inside the system is locked. Nothing can change. But these two processes, exhaust and suction, are variable mass processes. Okay? Like, for example, if you apply PV equal to MRT, if you want to apply, for example, at this point, mass will be something different. At this point, mass will be different. Correct? 
so it's very much hard to analyze so first assumption that we make is let us write this assumptions assumptions so first the system is assumed to be closed mass system is assumed to be closed system by deleting suction and exhaust passes by deleting suction and exhaust passes by deleting suction and exhaust passes the reason these two passes are variable mass passes and it's very much difficult to analyze them practically okay so that's why we get rid of this now one more intelligent assumption comes here during combustion in case of spark in case of compression ignition engines what you will do what you will do already whatever the mass of air is present inside to that mass you will again spray some fuel yes or no like in case of diesel engines what you will do you will put a fuel injector and spray some diesel inside because of the diesel again in this part also there is some chance for mass change okay but since practically air fuel ratios are very less in actual engines one assumption that we make here is mass of the system inside mass of the system is always fixed this is one more assumption which we make is always fixed because in some engines like in case of G, uh, gasoline even in case of gasoline direct injection in systems and all some mass gets added in this part but we are not going to take that mass whatever once the inlet valve is closed whatever the mass is inside the same mass is assumed to be inside nothing increasing nothing decreasing till this again exhaust valve opening clear that's what we have now mass is fixed third working fluid working fluid is assumed to be air is assumed to be air we are actually standardizing this cycle based on lot of assumptions actually and in this standard cycles we are using air as the substance as the working medium that's why these are called air standard cycles the word air means the air is actually the working fluid in this particular engines that's the main assumption okay now fourth in case of air air is ideal gas of course cp minus cv is r that also we know but cp and cv need not be constants for an ideal gas okay so we'll make one more assumption assuming air to be perfect gas air to be perfect gas cp cv r gamma whatever are constants are constants and there is also one more assumption because normally in a cycle starting from atmospheric pressure it will go to some hundreds of degrees celsius so at what values will take this means at what temperature we take these values okay we take them normally at stp conditions normally this 25 degrees celsius conditions ntp conditions sorry normal temperature pressure conditions cp cv r values are taken at around 25 degrees celsius are taken at 25 degrees celsius okay now when you take them at 25 degrees celsius that means we are taking the properties at a relatively colder temperature so that's why these cycles are in general called cold a standard cycles the reason being this properties are taken at a normal temperature pressure conditions but actually the engine will uh, can go up to some certain hundreds of degrees celsius so that's why these are called cold a standard cycles cold a standard cycles okay cold corresponds to this air working medium and we are actually standardizing this cycle because of lot of assumptions actually okay and one more important very important assumption that we make here is practically here the heat is generated because of combustion okay but in this cycles in air standard cycles we don't assume any combustion is taking place we'll assume that heat transfer is due to heat exchangers means once the piston once the system the air comes here to take this air from this point to this point what i'm doing i'm not actually doing any combustion of the fuel because my mass has to be constant inside the cylinder so what i'm doing i am actually bringing a hot body close to the gas so that gas gets heated up and go up to this point clear this is the assumption means heat transfer heat transfer 
is not due to combustion combustion it is due to heat exchangers it is due to heat exchangers okay so it is due to heat exchangers so after making all these assumptions then we have the assumptions of cold a standard cycles or maybe in general a standard cycles and we start analyzing them we start modifying this combustion process for different engines okay you see you take auto diesel or dual anything the only difference happens in this combustion part okay because this combustion is not same for all types of fuels so the once if you delete the suction and combustion uh, suction and exhaust process the only difference between auto diesel and dual whatever the cycle you take is this combustion process we will model this combustion depending on the type of ignition and the type of uh, combustion that actually happens in si ci engines clear is this clear to all of you if you understand this i told you next all things are very much easy for you clear okay so is this clear to all of you so please type in the chat box yahan tak sabko clear hai okay clear 100% some love symbol is going like this good so only auto and diesel are there in gate xc hot diesel is also included i think xc pe safe auto and diesel tha syllabus mein okay anyway study dual also for mechanical you need it no okay now let's see now let us start with this auto cycle okay so okay okay fine some symbols are going 100% good okay so see here auto cycle so this cycle is basically suitable for spark ignition or spark ignition engines spark ignition engines and normally when we will generally go for spark ignition the spark ignition is done for fuels with high self igniting temperatures with high self igniting temperatures with high self igniting temperatures now you know self ignition temperature all of you might know if you start heating the fuel generally in in general any fuel there comes a particular temperature where it can catch fire automatically okay like in case of diesel and all you can see so that's why normally diesel is much more highly protected as compared to petrol if you go to even petrol bunks and all okay so this fuels with high self igniting temperatures actually and normally one such fuel that we use in day to day life is gasoline normally in technical terms it's called motor spirit normally even in when i was working with hpcl we usually call this ms which is actually gasoline and in general day to day world it's called petrol okay so this is what we have gasoline petrol and uh, you know uh, motor speed is the actual name technically of this now in si engines i want to tell you one thing normally for a combustion to happen let's suppose you want to burn something okay some fuel wood or whatever you need three things first thing you need is definitely the material if you want to combust second is oxygen third thing is the source of ignition okay source of ignition is very much dangerous and very much important also for a combustion to happen okay like for example i'll tell you normally let's suppose if there is a gas leakage here okay in this room let's say i'm teaching and because of here uh, some maybe some cooking or something let's say some gas got leaked here there is oxygen in this room there is fuel in this room but until i provide a spark of ignition you cannot generate fire yes or no so that's why normally in case of even industrial accidents what happens generally because of gas leaks and all the sensors which are attached they show the signal that so and so gas is leaked when gas is leaked when the sensor gets you know alert when sensor alerts us the main thing we will take care is no source of ignition is around because fuel is there oxygen is there you cannot stop them but we will make sure that no source of ignition is coming into the field okay means someone uh, there should not be any spark which is coming inside actually clear so anyway this is spark suitable for this particular fuel which is si engine uh, uh, motor spirit or gasoline and normally we go with spark ignition engines actually now let's see in case of spark ignition engines what happens p v now you want to design a cycle and here one more assumption that we make is all compressions and expansions are isentropic all compressions and expansions 
are isentropic. I told you the logic yesterday. You remember? Isentropic. Because your ultimate aim is to optimize to get the maximum work output from the cycle. Now, if you want to get maximum work output from the cycle, then clearly in a closed system, I have told you in last class also, PV, for example, PV. And let's say you want to compress. The gas can move only up to this position, means the piston can move up to only these positions. So let's say this is adiabatic. This is, I mean, this is adiabatic. This is, I, uh, you know, sorry, just a minute. This is adiabatic. This is isotopic. Isentropic. Now, clearly, you know, n value increase. So practically to compress the system from one volume to another volume, clearly, you know, isothermal is the least possible or the best possible method. But practically, isothermal process cannot be taken place exactly. This, the next process, n is equal to 1. And this process is relatively easy to analyze for n is equal to gamma. So practically, we cannot create an isothermal process very slowly, uh, I mean, very fastly. So that's why we go for PV power gamma is equal to constant process, which is the next best available for the actual scenario. And also in actual scenarios, creating isothermal process is difficult, but creating adiabatic is easy. Just to insulate the uh, cylinder very thickly so that whatever the compression you do, gas uh, heat cannot actually escape out. Okay, so because of strong insulation. So that's why adiabatic is very much easy to do. Similar in case of expansions, the same logic, practical isothermal cannot be done. So we'll compromise a bit and we will come for reversible adiabatics. Okay, and all processes are internally reversible. All processes are internally irreversible. Internally irreversible. Someone asked me now, what is internally irreversible? Shall I spend some five minutes on this? Then we'll go for auto and diesel. Okay. So here, what is this internally irreversible actually? Okay. Shall I explain you for a bit of four to five minutes? Okay or no? Shall we go? All of you are clear with this. Okay, fine. Okay, so you want me to explain or shall we uh, go forward? It's fine. Okay, you want me to explain, fine. Let's see, I'll just give you one case. Okay, so normally what is irreversible process is irreversible process. If process can be traced back, if process can be traced back, to initial state to initial state leaving no effect on surroundings leaving no effect on surroundings then we say the process is reversible but majority of the times what happens i'll tell you in majority of the cases this surroundings cannot be taken back to the original state okay what actually a reversible process is Let's say, for example, you have system and surroundings. Because of this process, the system definitely experiences some change. And because of the happening of this process, the surroundings also will experience some change. But if you can make the process completely reversible such that both system and surroundings come back to their original position, then, you th then the process is completely reversible. But practically, it is not possible always. Okay, In majority, 99% of the times, it's not possible. Okay, The reason, I'll tell you. See here. Let's say there is an insulation. There is an insulation and there is gas inside. You have some gas inside. And let's say you have a paddle wheel, for example. You have a paddle wheel and there is some block of mass m. Now, one thing that you can understand is if you release this mass, then what happens? This mass displaces from this position to this position. Say new position is this. So this is a new position of the mass. By the time this mass falls from this height to this height, this paddle wheel will rotate and definitely it provides some energy because of which temperature increases, correct? So you can see if, for example, if I write a PV plot then clearly if it's an ideal gas let's see if this is an ideal gas actually initially the state of the system is here now this bo box is of some constant volume so v is constant let us say volume v is the volume of the box 
now by the time this block falls from this height to this height because of this displacement this paddle wheel will rotate and clearly it delivers some work into the gas and definitely temperature will increase okay and if this is a ideal gas at constant volume if temperature is increasing definitely pressure will also increase let's say this is the state 1 to 2 clearly okay so these are the intermediate states okay so these are the intermediate states now one point i want to ask you let's say after this got finished if i remove this insulation if i remove this insulation what happens whatever is the heat because this block is initially in thermal equilibrium with surroundings now what happens because of this removal of insulation some heat goes out clearly this heat goes out q and again the system will come back to the original position yes or no try to understand carefully guys here in this case initially when there is insulation because of the rotation of the paddle wheel in this constant volume temperature of this gas increases which means this pressure also increases but if i remove the insulation after a certain time let's say this block has come here this gas is at temperature t now i have removed the insulation then definitely q goes out as q is going out this gas temperature will again come back to normal along the constant volume because i'm not at all changing this container okay so that means the gas can actually go from 1 to 2 and again it can come back from 2 to 1 along the same path yes because i'm not changing the volume clear so pressure will clearly decrease because if heat is losing temperature drops pressure drops along this constant volume it comes back to 1 okay now when this comes back to 1 you can understand this gas is following the same path and coming back to 1 but the gas came to came back to the original temperature but is this block moving here again gas is going and coming back along the same path and coming coming to state one again fine so gas is undergoing irreversible process excellent is this block coming back to this position again will this block again get lifted up because of this heat ejection and the gas coming to its original state no correct so that means on the surroundings there is some effect of this process this process is not able to bring back the surroundings to its original state clear that's what this statement actually tells you okay block wapas nahi aayega pakka theek hai so that's why you can see what we generally do in our analysis since our major business is gas to do to work with this gas we'll neglect this and we define this word which is internally means within the system means inside the system means if gas is the system the gas travels irreversibly and we'll generally ask for is it a quasi static process yes because you can identify states between each and every point okay so quasi static it means externally irreversible yes correct so yaha process externally irreversible like irreversible kyunki block wapas nahi aayega theek hai so that's why you can see this process is told as internally irreversible because internally within the system there is no irreversibility but externally there is certain irreversibility which is coming clear so that's why to make our job and life easy we'll put this word internally so that nothing is changing inside clear no radiation loss actually there will be radiation losses okay uh, not that i never taught heat transfer in online but i'll just tell you one thing see here normally this concept of like heat heat uh, heat loss or basically heat transferred due to radiation in low temperatures is neglected is very much false okay even at low temperatures the heat transfer due to radiation can be good enough like let us say hum, some 100 watts of heat is flowing out even at 45 degrees celsius temperature there could be cases like in case of electronics or maybe in some other cases like in wind shields and all where 50 percent of or 50 watts of heat out of that 100 watts is due to radiation okay so radiation at low temperatures actually should not be neglected genuinely speaking but people do it again we are engineers we can do anything we can assume anything to make life simple okay is this clear to all of you is this clear if it's clear i want to start the auto cycle because time is running up okay so is this clear to all of you did you all understand this this part what is internal irreversibility what is total irreversibility
ओके या नाउ लेट्स कंटिन्यू दिस इन केस ऑफ ऑटो साइकिल सो वन थिंग वी एज्यूम्ड इज दिस कंपेशन इज गोइंग टू बी आइस एंड टॉपिक सो वी हैव एन आइस एंड टॉपिक प्रोसेस लेट्स से इफ दिस इज द टॉप डेट सेंटर एंड बॉटम डेट सेंटर और मे बी इनर डेट सेंटर एंड आउटर डेट सेंटर सो यू नो क्लियरली दिस कंबर्शन हैपन्स आइस एंड टॉपिक वन टू टू नाउ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ऑफ कंबर्शन कम्स हियर सी इफ यू हैव ए पिस्टन दिस इज योर पिस्टन एंड यू हैव द सिलेंडर हेड tell one thing if this is actually your tdc means this point has to come somewhere here by traveling tell me one thing at extreme positions will the velocity of the piston is fast or will the is the velocity of the piston more or less means if you see at these positions will the at these positions odc and idc will the piston move fast or slow will the piston move fast or slow will the piston move fast or slow actually will the piston move fast or slow it will move very slow correct because these are the points where velocity gets reversed okay so means till till here if piston is coming fast at this point it has to reverse its velocity so within this locality of inner dead center the piston actually moves very slow understood clear look let us suppose if i throw a ball up then what happens till the point ball is directed upwards it's fine at the point near to the point where the ball is about to change its direction then at that point the velocity is very small same thing here okay if here the piston velocity is fast it cannot it, it cannot come back actually it will try to move again okay so when normally if you do a bit of kinematic analysis you will find out these two are the points these two are the points where the velocity is zero actually okay means at this two points the velocity of this piston is actually zero clear now try to understand one thing these are spark ignition engines so let's say if there is a spark you have given a spark plug and let's say this some spark which is generated so if this spark is generated and combustion wave is propagating then here the fuel is already very high pressurized because of the combustion you see the pressure is increasing compared to this this pressure is very high now at that point if combustion happens because of ignition what happens blast happens okay so when this blast is happening normally we generally create this uh, uh, combustion we generally ignite the spark slightly before it becomes tdc because of the reasons of pressure and uh, pressure waves pulses and all okay right now we are not talking but if this piston is actually here and if this spark plug is ignited the time taken for the combustion is very very less as yes or no because combustion happens very rapidly because here there is a fuel air mixture and you are giving some source of ignition so definitely the blast happens very fast here as yes or no now tell me one thing the time required for the spark or for the combustion to happen is very less within that small time can you tell me this piston will be able to move means this piston here let's say in case of spark ignition engines if the spark is happening combustion is happening very rapidly within that small time will this piston be able to move large distance or small distance because the piston is already coming very close to tdc so please tell me what will be the movement of the piston or in fact what will be the volume swept by the piston during the combustion within very small time blast happens very rapidly in that small very small blast time the volume displaced by this piston will be actually very small because the piston is approaching tdc and at that point velocities are very very small almost zero correct yes can you understand this logic i am repeating combustion time combustion time is very small because of external agent okay spark we are generating we are intentionally putting it on fire then immediately it catches fire all over okay so the wave propagates very fast and in that small time since the piston is very close to tdc the movement of the piston in that combustion time is practically very very small so that's why in case of this kind of externally spark generated engines means in this case of si engines the combustion process which is actually 
suppose it to be like this that process is replaced with for our easiness we can comfortably assume it as constant volume process understood is it clear to all or not did you all understand why in auto cycle this combustion process can be approximated as constant volume process yes or no clear because in case of diesel sander what happens the fuel injections injectors takes certain time and all but when case of this spark ignition engines when you generate the spark immediately the wave propagates at very rapid velocity because this is at very high pressure by that time it's already combusted air fuel mixture okay is this clear to all of you why this question is important actually why in auto cycle combustion is actually constant volume because when we are external generating spark the time of combustion is very small and by the time of combustion the piston is at one of the dead centers so the velocity of the piston is much small and clearly almost the piston displaces by clearly much, not much amount by the time this combustion happens okay so for the duration of the combustion the piston movement is very small so that's why we can actually put it as constant volume clear now let's see you know of course again expansion now you can understand as soon as this exhaust valve opens pressure falls drastically okay and exhaust valve generally opens when the piston is about to reach this so similarly the same logic here if you apply the pressure drops drastically at this point this is how you have the construction of auto cycle a standard auto cycle clear now you see the actual cycle and the converted cycle how much physics is involved in between it's not like simply auto one day get up and just draw the cycle okay there is plenty of logics behind each and everything clear i might have told you this is the auto cycle and i have started r equal to v1 by v2 all these things but you should know how this cycle how this cycle can be converted to this cycle okay is it clear to all of you 100% okay fine now let us now analyzing this is not a big business we can easily do that let me put that now let us do some maths for some time because so much of theory i was talking p v 1 2 then you have constant volume normally in actual case this line will be very large okay and pressure actually drops okay so 1 2 3 4 now if you write certain bit of nomenclature s is equal to constant this is v is equal to constant this is again s is equal to constant and clearly this is v is equal to constant okay so this is pv now let's go to ts diagram ts diagram now first 1 to 2 process okay so what is process 1 to 2 come on tell me what is process 1 to 2 i think i have already written given hint okay now i can ask you i have deleted the hint okay what is this process 1 to 2 isentropic yes so in case of basically it's adiabatic and also we have assumed there is internally reversibility so internal reversible and adiabatic so along this process 1 to 2 1 to 2 is not suction okay compression we have eliminated the suction and exhaust process already clear isentropic okay so this is isentropic if this is isentropic that means clearly because of compression temperature increases you know so 1 2 2 is actually your compression process 1 2 to 2 now let me draw this line a bit slow because i want to explain few things One to two, then we have this constant volume process. Constant volume process, so V is equal to constant, and this is state three. You have this four. Yeah. 
this is again constant volume process. Whenever you are drawing these diagrams, make sure four is actually more than two, okay? Because clearly we know exhaust is very hot, okay? So T4 is actually more than T2, okay? So this is the diagram, and we have S is equal to constant, and S is equal to constant actually, okay? And in this cycle, other than the piston displacement works, there is no other works like spring work or a paddle wheel, nothing is there, okay? So only displacement works is there. Now let us try to mathematically analyze. First of all, did you understand how for this cycle, this cycle is generated, okay? No need to mug up. This is isentropic. The, now, because dt by ds is T by Cv, that ratio is positive. So if temperature is increasing because of combustion, definitely entropy has to increase because you know, dt by ds is T by Cv, today I was telling you in the beginning of the class, this is positive, this is also positive, so clearly this ratio is positive. And during combustion, if dt is positive, temperature is increasing, then clearly S has to increase, that means curve has to be in that fashion. That's it, okay? Now anyway, bit of understanding of differential equation. Now, let's see how to analyze this. That's what we need, next step. Analysis of auto cycle. analysis of auto cycle of course we are doing only uh, energy analysis analysis of auto cycles okay now 1 to 2 clearly p1 v1 power gamma is equal to p2 v2 power gamma which implies or uh, and also you can say t1 v1 power gamma minus 1 is equal to t2 v2 power gamma minus 1 because this is reversible adiabatic then v2 is equal to v3 constant volume for 3 to 4 also again these relations will hold and 4 to 1 is again constant volume process okay now let's understand certain things here in this analysis of auto cycle if you want to calculate thermal efficiency you know 1 minus qr by qs of course magnitudes okay both are magnitudes in case of constant clearly this process is adiabatic this process is also adiabatic so this equation has nothing to do with 1 to 2 and also 3 to 4 because they are isentropics, okay? Now, what is process 2 to 3? This is heat addition process, correct? So, heat addition is taking place here and heat rejection is taking place here. QR, you know this. What is QR? QR is nothing but heat interaction in this process 4 to 1, okay? So, let's see. We know TDS is equal to DU plus PDV and this process 3 to 4 is actually constant volume process dv is actually zero specific volume change is actually zero in that process now tds since this process is reversible we know del q by t is equal to ds because there is no delta s generation because everything is reversible so del q is nothing but tds if you want total value you have to integrate this that's it so from 4 to 1 okay so 4 to 1 4 to 1 this is u1 minus u4 okay so this is cv times T1 minus T4. So the heat interaction in this process is Cv into T1 minus T4 actually. But anyway, we have already taken only magnitude. So we'll take, because this equation is valid only with magnitude. Because you know, thermal efficiency is equal to sigma W by Qs, which is sigma Q. Because sigma W is same as sigma Q as per first law of thermodynamics for cycles. This is Qr plus Qs divided by Qs. And eventually, if you do this integration, you'll get this QR negative. That's why we'll put minus sign here. Okay, so that's how it becomes 1 minus QR by QS like this. Okay, so just a minute. So see here. This is the actual heat interaction. So if you take only magnitude, this becomes 1 minus CV times T4 minus T1 actually divided by, in case of heat addition, process is from 2 to 3. So similarly, if you do same story, you'll get T3 minus T2. Is this clear to all of you till this point? Yes or no? So please type in the chat box. Is it clear to all of you till this point? Yes or not? Did you understand this a simple expression for calculation of thermal efficiency? Yes? Okay. All of you. Once I just want to see from which place all of you are, so please type your places from which, uh, I know all of you are from India, but maybe few people can be from outside as well. But can you all please your location from where you are watching this class? Everyone type, all of you. All of you, so please type in the chat box. Vizag, 
तेलंगाना निजामाबाद मुंबई कोलकाता भोपाल पाटना ओके स्टिल एम पी चिंदवा वट इज दट सॉरी चिंदवा ओके फाइन छत्तीसगढ़ मोहदबाद कच्छ वैन ऑफ कच्छ नाइस बिहार किशानगंज ओके मुंबई गुड ऑल ऑफ यू एवरी वन शुड टाइप कम ऑन हैदराबाद ओके नाइस so we have good mix in this class okay so almost like uh, 20 people roughly so anyway now let's see we have the assumption see okay so cv can be cancelled because we made one assumption cv is constant at any temperature so thermal efficiency is equal to 1 minus t4 minus t1 divided by t3 minus t2 now i want to tell you one thing nagpur nice okay so see here i'll tell you one thing here look normally we have seen compression ratio r is equal to v1 total volume by clearance volume okay so v1 by v2 now for process 1 2 2 you know t1 v1 power gamma minus 1 is equal to t2 v2 power gamma minus 1 so what is t2 by t1 v1 by v2 whole power gamma minus 1 which is compression ratio power gamma minus 1 so t2 by t1 is equal to r power gamma minus 1 correct i can do this again for the process 3 to 4 what i can do see here t3 v3 power gamma minus 1 t4 v4 power gamma minus 1 so t3 by t4 is equal to v4 by v3 whole power gamma minus 1 but you can understand one thing 1 to 4 is constant volume 2 to 3 is also constant volume that means v4 i can replace with v1 and v3 i can replace with v2 power gamma minus 1 the reason is v1 is same as v4 and v2 is same as v3 actually because 2 to 3 is constant volume 1 to 4 is also or 4 to 1 is also constant volume that means you can see t3 by t4 is r power gamma minus 1 so this is what you have here okay so t3 by t4 is also r power gamma minus 1 you can understand something this is equation 1 and this is equation 2 from these two equations right hand side is same in both the equations can i say t2 by t1 is same as t3 by t4 can i say this which means can i say t1 into t3 is equal to t2 into t4 actually and normally t minimum t1 is the minimum temperature of the cycle and t3 is the maximum temperature of the cycle so this is t2 times t4 that's what you have okay so product of minimum and maximum temperatures in the cycle is equal to product of the other two temperatures and clearly here you can see one thing that this is set by atmospheric conditions normally a intake this is set by the metallurgical limits because you cannot take the temperature beyond certain value metal will get affected metallurgical limit and this is environmental constraint generally one minute constraint clear so minimum and maximum temperatures are decided already for the engine and this is equal to t to t4 clearly and also since v1 is equal to v4 and v2 is equal to v3 this also implies v1 v3 is equal to v2 v4 because 1 is same as 4 2 is same as 3 that's why you can also see this and clearly if you use ideal gas equation you can also end up with p1 p3 is equal to p2 p4 clear so this is what you can end up always so product of odd values of pressure volume and temperature is same as product of the even values in case of auto cycle you similarly you will see this uh, same for baton cycle also but anyway right now you can take this now why i have done this taking a bit of maths is if you look at this thermal efficiency t4 minus t1 by t3 minus t2 you can understand something here 1 minus if i take t1 common i have t4 by t1 minus 1 divided by if i take t2 common here t3 by t2 minus 1 actually okay so you can do these two things like normally t1 if you take common t4 by t1 minus 1 t2 if you take common t3 by t2 minus 1 now from this can you understand one thing t2 by t1 is same as t3 by t4 means you can get one point here from this if you shift this t4 here t4 by t1 
is same as if you shift this t1 i mean t2 here t3 by t2 is what you have here okay means if you swap these two t4 by t1 is equal to t3 by t2 if t4 by t1 is same as t3 by t2 can i cancel these two terms in the fraction okay so if i can cancel them i can see i can get thermal efficiency of auto is 1 minus t1 by t2 it just depends upon inlet temperature and also the comp temperature after the compression that's it okay so 1 minus t1 by t2 and clearly this t1 by t2 t1 by t2 can be written as t1 by t2 can be written as 1 by r power gamma minus 1 so 1 minus 1 by r power gamma minus 1 that's it this formula is well known to you many of you might have seen so many times that this is how you have the compression ratio clearly understood so this is the expression for general expression for thermal efficiency of auto cycle which is 1 minus t1 by t2 so this is temperature before compression this is temperature after compression that's it okay and this ratio is normal if you apply this poly, uh, adiabatic process you can see this t1 by t2 is 1 by r power gamma minus 1 clear so is this clear to all of you so please type in the chat box okay you might have seen all seen this right it's very easy to get all these things okay but the main physics lies in understanding how this cycle is getting not this how this cycle is getting generated that's the main physics okay if you can understand the physics then doing this math is like anyone can do it almost like uh, just like putting equations okay now let's i'll ask you one question can you tell me as compression ratio increases what happens to the thermal efficiency of auto what happens what do you feel it will increase or decrease or remains constant what do you feel generally so yes equation numerical wala aa sakta hai ya theoretical yeah generally this by knowing all these points you can answer the theoretical questions easily okay no issues numerical questions also come generally okay but without calculator you have to do at that point fine now what do you think here what happens to this will it increase or decrease in this expression if this compression ratio is increasing what do you think happens for the thermal efficiency of auto what do you think what will happen to thermal efficiency it will decrease or increase checking with calculator no need to check see here it will increase okay because clearly this value is positive okay so you know since gamma is greater than 1 so gamma minus 1 is greater than 0 so this implies r power gamma minus 1 increases as r increases because it's a positive power that's it okay so if this is increasing this total value will decrease if this total value is decreasing then this total value will increase okay because if this value which is getting subtracted is decreasing then definitely the efficiency increases okay so normally if you plot the graph so this actually increases i'll show you one graph here look if you see this thermal efficiency of auto and here you have the compression ratio this is one because it cannot be less than one clearly you can see this graph actually increases as you have expected but there comes certain saturation for this what is the physical reason for this saturation that's the main important point means you can see in general this si engines they generally operate over some range of compression ratios so this range is like our values are from 8 to 12 is what you generally operate this this is the range of performance of this auto engines the reason for this is clearly one thing is fine as we keep on increasing r this thermal efficiency of auto will keep on increasing okay so thermal efficiency of auto will keep increasing but one thing i want to tell you here there is something called knocking knocking so what is this knocking one of the very important phenomena in case of spark ignition engines especially means the fuels which we generally put with uh, spark plug and all so in case of knocking what happens see you have the cylinder head and you have the piston piston 
or piston is somewhere here still it want to go up this is piston and you have a spark plug you have inlet valve and also exhaust valve now this is air fuel mixture actually so you have this air fuel mixture you have this air fuel mixture now practically what happens this air fuel molecules get mixed up and the mixture of air fuel will get actually combusted in case of actual engines when you are compressing what happens here is these fuel molecules if the compression ratio is high vt by vc in cases this means your clearance volume is generally very small okay so clearance volume is very small so when the fuel is getting crushed into this particular small clearance volume what happens is these are local pockets of fuel pockets of fuel pockets of fuel actually here okay so we have this pockets of fuel and because of this heavy combustion and since this spots are highly fuel rich mixtures or highly fuel rich spots at this spots when the temperature is very high because of combustion definitely temperature increases because of presence of high pockets of fuel what happens combustion starts beginning or basically this molecules start begin to ignite even before the piston reaches the top dead center understood even before the piston completely reaches to the top dead center because of very less clearance volume means this fuel molecules are getting crushed and the temperature is increasing at this point so if temperature is increasing it happens sometimes it crosses or this particular fuel molecules get ignited even before this piston reaches temperature and this combustion is not at all wanted for us which is even dangerous for this device the reason is when this blasts happen independently at different spots this material normally in case of very organized motion of this spark it it's fine but these are very irregular and they cause very problematic to the engine and also the piston surface actually okay so this phenomena of blasting of this fuel rich spots is actually called pre ignition happens which is actually knocking and this knocking is actually very dangerous for the engine okay and obviously performance get decreases at the same time engine also gets affected so much so that's why normally this sound whenever this combustion happens whenever this uh, combustion happens this happens with a sound which is like the knocking of a door in general normally in some old bikes and all when engines get damaged and all you can see so this knocking happens okay and knocking is very much dangerous okay to control this knocking we will actually restrict this r to some particular value we will put a restriction on this r of course in olden days we have some agents which is called tel tetra ethyl lead which you might have seen tetra ethyl lead is used as anti knocking agent is used as anti knocking agent but at later stages this was eliminated because the combustion products of gasoline plus tetra ethyl lead contains you know very poisonous gases okay so that's why they are very hazardous and this was eliminated in recent days we came into certain technologies which is called gdi you might have seen on the back of the cars there is something called gdi have you seen normally i'll just show you if you have a pick gdi gdi uh, you know engine images okay okay directly it's coming so gdi car style type first gdi cars okay so if you see normally on some okay all this have gdi badges but normally i can yeah on the engine if you open you can see there is something called gdi even at the back of the car somewhere you can see gdi you might have seen in outside have you ever seen gdi this word gdi on any car normally you can see vt gdi is written variable wall timing gasoline direct injection to increase the efficiency there are a lot of techniques again which of course in this particular uh, batch i'm not going to cover because of time constraint but if you see this gdi means gasoline direct injection gasoline direct injection okay so like in case of diesel you again because the main problem here is presence of this fuel so you will put fuel only at the desired points so we have this gdi technologies which is the gasoline direct injection uh, into the engine but again this also got certain drawbacks 
then we have something called VT, variable valve timing. So the opening of the valves and closing, that was one more technique developed. And second is VCR, variable compression ratio engines. Normally this cylinder head is not fixed. It, it has certain uh, movement which could change the compression ratios. There are a lot of things which we have here, okay? So this is diesel, mein bas hota hai. sorry? Yeh toh diesel mein bhi hota hai na? Haan, diesel mein bhi hota hai. Normally in case of diesels, we don't give spark. They are self-igniting temperatures because the self-ignition temperature of diesel is slightly low as compared to petrol. You need not have a spark plug there. Okay. So anyway, you have this gasoline direct uh, injection, of course. Now, so basically this is the practical limit of operating. Practical limit. Practical limit of operation. Practical limit of operation, actually. Okay. So this is what you have here. Clear? So this is how we have certain uh, things, R for gamma minus 1, and this R can be varied only within certain limits. Got it? Is it clear to all of you till this point? Okay. So please type in the chat box, is this clear to all of you till this point? Did you all understand the logic behind putting some limit on R because of knocking? Yes? Okay, now? Fine? Okay, so now let's see one more important thing before going to diesel cycle. What do you think is the effect of this gamma? As gamma increases, what ha what do you think it happens? Let's suppose instead of air, if I'm using helium, for example, okay? Instead of air, if I'm using helium as a substance, or hydrogen, hydrogen is again diatomic, of course, if I'm using helium, what do you think will happen? What happens to the thermal efficiency for the same compression ratio? what happens to the thermal efficiency for the same compression ratio actually. Shall we check what happens? See here. Normally, you know, thermal efficiency is function of compression ratio and also gamma. So let's study the effect of change in thermal efficiency with respect to gamma at constant compression ratio, okay? So if you differentiate this, one minus one by r power gamma minus one. So if you differentiate this, 1 minus, or this can be written as 1 minus r power 1 minus gamma, okay? Because this 1 by r power gamma minus 1 can be written as 1 minus r power 1 minus gamma. Now, thermal efficiency of change in thermal efficiency with respect to gamma is like derivative of 1 is 0 minus. Now, if 1 minus gamma is the variable, we have n into, if you have x power or a power x, for example, this is the differentiation, okay? You can apply log also, I think. Let us uh, see the log as well. ln of thermal efficiency is equal to log 1 minus r power 1 minus gamma actually. Okay, so this is what you have. Now the derivative of this, okay, I think math is getting a little complicated. I'll explain you using physical stuff. Okay, you can see as gamma minus 1, as gamma increases, this implies gamma minus 1 increases and compression ratio is greater than 1 always. So this implies r power gamma minus 1 also increases. So this implies thermal efficiency will increase because increase in the denominator will increase the total value. So therefore, at given r, as gamma increases, thermal efficiency of auto will also increase. This is a bit simple because doing differentiation again, uh, the math inside is getting complicated. So we will stick to here, okay? Because clearly you can see this value is more than one. So if gamma is increasing, the value which is more than one and the power is increasing, then definitely the value, total value will increase, okay? So like normal, if you see, if you if I give you this graph, because in some interviews this is asked actually, thermal efficiency and you have the compression ratio so let's say at a particular compression ratio, if I have three graphs, okay? I have three graphs like this. Now, let's say if I call this A and B, can anyone tell me out of these two, which is diatomic? I, I mean, out of these two, one is monatomic and one is diatomic gas. So can anyone tell me which is diatomic? Can anyone tell me which is diatomic gas? Out of A and B, one is diatomic. Can anyone tell me what is diat? I mean, which is diatomic?
out of A and B, one is diatomic. Can you tell me which is diatomic? A or B? B is diatomic. Yes, correct. B is diatomic. The reason is, for if you take gamma values, gamma of monoatomic in yesterday's class, I was telling one plus two by f. So this is two by six, which is like uh, four by three, which is sorry. This is two by three for monoatomic. So which is like five by three, which is one point six seven. Okay, and gamma of diatomic is like one plus two by f. This is four. Sorry, five. So 7 by 5 which is 1.4 for diatomic and gamma of triatomic is 1 plus 2 by 6 degrees of freedom so this is like 1 by 3 4 by 3 which is 1.33 clearly okay so this is 1.33 actually so that's what you have so 1.33 1.67 and it is diatomic so definitely uh, sorry, I have written A and B, correct? So, monoatomic, diatomic and also triatomic gases. Now, if you see carefully, gamma is high for monoatomic gas, okay? So, if gamma is high for monoatomic gas, then, guys, just a minute, it is 2 by 6 or 2 by 3? 6 is here and 3 is here. Normally, if, it the, if, the, if the molecule is monoatomic, it has 3 translations and also rotations. 1 plus 2 by F, right? 1 plus 2 by F degrees of uh, freedom is f is the degrees of freedom so coming to f degrees i think this order is uh, you know correct correct yeah this order is correct so if this order is correct then gamma is more for diatomic if gamma is more then definitely thermal efficiency will be more so this is gamma is more so this is diatomic diatomic and this is monoatomic monoatomic correct values are right yeah so this is monoatomic i mean uh, i told a i guess right okay whatever so this is actually the correct uh, diagram in general okay this is correct okay so values are correct now so mono diatomic and triatomic yes correct because one molecule will have only three degrees of translation clearly so three and it's a molecule diatomic molecule along with three translations it also rotates in two independent okay fine so this is diatomic and also monoatomic okay now if you see at a particular temperature at a particular temperature like this clearly efficiency due to the monoatomic molecule is large okay so that's what fine so anyway, you have this uh, gamma dependency and also this combustion ratio dependency. Now, only one thing I want to just give you, I'll give you some small homework also. So please uh, try to do this. Sorry, any any issues till this point? Correct now? Now, let's see. Maximum work output of an auto cycle. Just we'll look at one condition because we will look similar thing for baton also maximum work output net work output maximum net work output for auto cycle for auto cycle okay so what is the maximum net work output for auto cycle so let's see this all good right yeah maximum net work output for auto cycle so if you have auto cycle w net you see this is W122 plus W223 plus W324 plus W421. Clear. Okay. Now, these two are zeros because they are constant volume process. We have only piston works. Okay. We have only piston displacements, no other forms of work. So, V equal to constant and V equal to constant there. Now, if Vs are constant, now 122 is isentropic. You know, TDS is equal to DU plus PDV and this is closed system. Now, 1 to 2 is isentropic and 4 to 3 to 4 is also isentropic. So, clearly du is equal to minus PdV. So, if you integrate, okay, so integral PdV, which is the work, is equal to minus du is what we have here, okay. So, minus du. That's how we calculate the change in work or work for isentropic process, okay, which is change in internal energy. So, this is, since the integration is like reverse, 
from state 1 to state 2. So state 1 to state 2, we have minus of u2 minus u1. So which is like u2, u1 minus u2. So u1 minus u2 plus u3 minus u4 actually here. Okay. Now u1 minus u2 can be written as cv times t1 minus t2 plus t3 minus t4. Okay. So this is actually the work. But t1 minus t2 is actually negative. So clearly in this process work is negative because it's compression. Okay. Now t1, t3 are metallurgical limits which is fixed. You can see t2 is equal to t1 into r power gamma minus 1. Similarly t4 is equal to t3 by r power gamma minus 1. We have seen this. Now w net is equal to cv times t1 minus t2 which is t1 r power gamma minus 1 plus t3 minus t3 by r power gamma minus 1 actually here. Okay. So this is what we have. Now clearly t1, t3 are fixed. Normally for a given engine t3 is decided by the metallurgical limits and t1 is also locked by the atmospheric conditions because air inlet happens from there. Now clearly if you want to maximize this expression for w net to be maximum to be maximum you can have dw net by we have only one variable which is the compression ratio we can change that so this is equal to zero because t1 and t3 are locked already okay so if these two are locked you have to differentiate this so cv is anyhow constant okay so w net so if you do this ratio you will get r power gamma minus 1 is equal to t3 by t1 actually here okay so or square root is also there. Let us do because I am not sure with the square root value. Let us do this. I think square root is also there. Anyway, let us check. So, derivative of this is minus t1 into gamma minus 1 into r power gamma minus 2. That is what we have because if you differentiate this, r is the variable gamma minus 1 into r power gamma minus uh, 2. t3 is constant minus t3 into this is r power 1 minus gamma is what you can write here. So, 1 minus gamma into r power gamma that's what you have okay so this is equal to zero correct that's what you have as a zero of course if you differentiate this because i'm not sure with the square root and all so just let's differentiate this you you also please work parallelly in your book let's see so t1 is constant so that doesn't have any impact to make minus t1 into r power gamma minus one so gamma minus one into r power gamma minus one minus one so gamma minus two minus t3 into this one r power 1 minus gamma so 1 minus gamma into r power 1 minus gamma minus 1 so i think this is correct so if you do this you can cancel some things actually here this gamma minus 1 can make this plus and eliminate this this r power gamma will give a r square in the denominator so if you have this r square then what you can do this implies minus t1 by r square is equal to t3 so t3 is equal to t1 by r square so small r optimal is equal to square root of t1 by t3 which is t minimum by t maximum that's what you have correct so therefore compression ratio for maximum work r for maximum work output work output is optimal compression ratio is equal to square root of t minimum by t maximum sorry t maximum by t minimum i guess correct just a minute r square is equal to t1 by t3 is it t3 is equal to minus 2 so correct this is what we are getting but actually compression ratio is actually more than 1 now guys please do this differentiation carefully once t1 we don't have anything minus t1 into gamma minus 1 into r power gamma minus 2 on the top plus because this is anyhow constant this will go so minus t3 into r power 1 minus gamma so 1 minus gamma into r power gamma is equal to 0 please check this once so if you check this gamma minus 1 cancels out with a plus sign here so r power gamma will actually cancel the things minus t1 by r square or t3 minus t1 by r square is equal to 0 so r optimal is equal to square root of t1 by t3 but actually t1 by t3 is less than 1 so compression ratio which is vt by vc cannot be less than 1 actually okay so something is happening here so please check in this term differentiation with respect to r 
do this calculation just do this differentiation okay so for w net to be maximum we have to calculate dw net by dr has to be zero and gamma is fixed it's a constant so it's like a power c v t1 plus t3 minus t1 into r power gamma minus 1 minus t3 into r power 1 minus gamma this is what we have okay if you differentiate this with respect to smaller these two terms will go then minus t1 into r power gamma minus 1 so this is the variable this is constant so n what is the derivative of x power n normally n into x power n minus 1 correct this is what we have as the derivative correct if you integrate n into by n so that gets cancelled correct so minus t1 into gamma minus 1 into r power gamma minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus t3 into 1 minus gamma into r power 1 minus gamma minus 1 so this is minus gamma is equal to 0 correct yeah this is what we have so let's check if you have this then anyway by making this plus these two can be cancelled so if you cancel this we have t3 into r power minus gamma is equal to t1 into r power gamma minus 2 okay so we have this gamma minus 2 now if you get this t1 here and if you send this here we have t3 just a bit of maths okay do carefully t3 by t1 t3 by t1 is equal to r power gamma minus 2 by this uh, actually if you multiply this we have r power gamma again because this r power minus gamma if you shift to the other side it will become r power gamma so it becomes r power gamma minus 2 plus gamma actually that's what we have right if you shift this carefully this is actually t3 by r power gamma so multiplication r power gamma so 2 power gamma minus 2 okay so t maximum by t minimum is equal to optimal power 2 times of gamma minus 1 this is what you have okay so 2 times of gamma minus 1 okay fine so what about this compression ratio optimal compression ratio t max by t minimum whole power 1 by 2 times of gamma minus 1 that's it okay so this is the correct value actually maths has to be done little carefully otherwise things go wrong okay so this is the optimal compression ratio okay now it's fine yeah t3 by r square yes this is what you got okay is it fine now we have the optimal compression ratio is equal to t max by t minimum whole power 1 by 2 times of gamma minus 1 okay so this implies you can see if you raise both sides to the value r optimal power gamma minus 1 this becomes square root of t maximum by t minimum this is the correct relation t maximum by t minimum okay yeah basically i did one mistake when i'm doing differentiation i i uh, made this something different okay it's not r power minus gamma that's what i have kept so but it's a simple differentiation okay i hope you might have understood by this time it's a simple differentiation if you do little carefully you will end up with these terms so this has to be the optimal compression ratio in case of any engines okay so we calculate this r optimum whole power gamma minus one and we try to set the compression ratio plus or minus uh, five percent okay now once you get this i want to show you one important thing here since t2 by t1 is equal to v1 by v2 whole power gamma minus 1 which is r power gamma minus 1 in this case you can see or since uh, you know you can also see t2 is equal to t1 r optimal power gamma minus 1 which is t1 into this optimal power gamma minus 1 can be written as square root of t3 by t1 actually so this product if you see this t1 cancel the square root times so square root of t1 t3 that's it okay and t2 t4 uh, you know t1 t3 is equal to t2 t4 you can also see t4 is equal to t1 t3 by t2 and t2 is square root of i mean sorry this is t1 actually here by t2 value is t1 t3 so you can understand if you simplify this becomes square root of t1 t3 again 
means in this case you can understand one thing this t2 and t4 are actually same okay so at optimal conditions at optimal conditions your t2 should be same as t4 which is equal to square root of t1 t3 there are some questions which can come in gate from this point this one at optimal conditions at optimal conditions okay so this is what you get this is second one so these two things you have to make a note of and if you put this t2 t4 values or t1 t3 uh, i mean this compression ratio r optimum means if you keep this value of r in this expression you will get w net maximum will be equal to cv times square root of t3 or t max minus square root of t minimum whole square you can just do it for your homework i'm leaving it so just only thing you have to do is in this expression in this expression in this uh, part instead of this r power gamma minus 1 you have to substitute this value okay or uh, basically this value r power gamma minus 1 directly you have t max by t minimum these are some important things which you can see in this auto cycle okay that's it so these three parts one two and three and of course four these are generally important in case of auto cycle they'll ask you for the maximum network output of auto cycle what could be the compression ratio okay they can give you uh, you can actually use this relation they'll give you t minimum and t maximum and gamma of course you can calculate using this particular formula clear to all of you okay so please type in the chat box is this clear okay did you understand this it's just a bit of maths that's it okay once you get this expression differentiate it calculate the value of r where it is optimum and you can do this and t2 and t4 becomes equal for the condition of maximum work output that's it okay just you have to work out a bit of maths maximum minimum concept first derivative equal to zero then do all the things okay so everyone who is on live so please type in the chat box did you all understand things about auto cycle like once you generate this cycle then from here calculating thermal efficiency using these relations getting these relations and finally this is the thermal efficiency for auto cycle then why there is certain limitation because of knocking and why what happens with increase in uh, gamma value so as gamma increases thermal efficiency of auto increases for maximum work output how to work out the things okay you can see this okay these things are important because generally questions come from uh, auto and diesel cycles many times and uh, they can ask you these things the same analysis is also done for baton in case of baton instead of compression ratio we talk about pressure ratios only one thing comes excess is gamma on the top because p and t are related with the gamma on the top here okay that's what clear now similarly let's go for one more part before we i think the time is less but anyway let's quickly get some idea so in case of diesel cycles like normally these are for uh, self igniting engines or self igniting fuels one fuel which we identified is actually diesel and rudolf diesel is the name of the person who gave this cycle that's why this fuel which works on this cycle is named as diesel of course okay so diesel and here it is nicolas a auto fine so in this diesel cycle so normally self ignition no need of any spark plug if you have p and v clearly so compression is common from state 1 to state 2 but here you can see when you see this piston cylinder assembly like this so when the piston is moving 2 and 4 around this top dead center 
the duration of combustion in case of diesel engines basically in case of self ignition engines is actually large as compared to the spark ignition engines because when you are giving a spark externally or intentionally you are actually igniting the fuel but which we don't do in this case clearly you will have a fuel injector of course valves are there for inlet and outlet of air and you also have a fuel injector this is not spark plug this time this is fuel injector so you generally have air inside air molecules are present all over compressed air so into this compressed air you will actually spray fuel diesel okay so you will actually spray diesel now normally if you go to a subject which is called spray mechanics which i'm not doing right now but i'll just tell you the injection of diesel into this particular piston cylinder assembly is done generally in four parts okay normally you have the pilot injections then the main injections post pilot post pilot injections and also scavenging injections normally last part is done because once the combustion is generated once the combustion happened you will form soot actually soot is nothing but the black particles which you can generally see even in case of household devices you can see soot so to burn that soot again we'll do the injection so injection timing is actually very large comparatively and during this injection what happens the combustion happens stage wise will maintain the stages in such a way that the pressure inside the cylinder don't experience much uh, much of the change actually okay means during the combustion combustion is of very less duration within the within that less duration the pressure inside the piston or the pressure inside the cylinder basically doesn't change much actually okay so the comp till the piston starts the backward movement normally in this injections there will be four injections which we do for the fuel right from the first injection to the second injection the time of combustion is short because compared to the total engine time compared to auto cycle it is large means combustion happens for some particular time interval okay now when this combustion happens the movement of the piston is of course present like not in like in the previous case but the pressure inside the cylinder is constant because combustion keeps happening understood let's suppose if combustion happened and if the piston is starting to move then definitely pressure will drop but here during the complete movement of the piston even though there is volume change pressure will not fall because combustion keeps happening over some certain certain period of time which we which we generally call cut off okay so in this case combustion keeps happening such that even the piston is displacing pressure will not fall because combustion keeps happening over some particular period so this is 3 then again you have this expansion up to state 4 and finally you will have this 4 to 1 which is constant volume heat ejection this part is same only the combustion part differs did you understand why even there is piston displacement but pressure is not falling here the reason is this combustion happens over certain duration of time such that the pressure fluctuations are almost null and the pressure is maintained constant within that small part of the combustion okay and normally this is not very much it's almost like 5% or 8% generally of this complete stoke okay so this is 3 so compression ratio r is v1 by v2 and we call something called cut off ratio cut off ratio and this is the fuel cut off point fuel cut off point actually here we are saying the fuel cut off point and combustion is ending at the same time but practically there is certain delay fuel combustion or fuel injection stops and combustion still gets carried for some more time because it's like there is certain delay actually in the ignition because the the temperature has to transfer to the diesel because diesel generally gets combusted because of temperature self ignition temperature as soon as this fuel injector releases the fuel inside the piston cylinder what happens is let's say if this is the injector and here are the combustion gases okay till then the some fuel got combusted now when new diesel particles enter this flame it takes certain time to catch the temperature of this particular medium okay so there is certain lag and delay in actual cases but anyway this engine injection lags and all will take care in some other uh, course but right now we can see this is the fuel cutoff point and this cutoff ratio is like v3 by v2 actually okay so v3 by v2 and generally cutoff is defined as some percent of stroke like five percent of the stroke six percent of the stroke so cutoff in general x percent of stoke so what do we mean by this actually so cutoff happens and cutoff volume is v2 minus v3 minus v2 so v3 minus v2 is actually x by 100 times of stoke stoke is total v1 minus v2 of course if you 
divide length on both sides, you will get in terms of displacements of the, if you divide area of cross section, you will get in terms of lengths. But this is what we have. So if you take V2 out, you get V3 by V2 minus 1 is equal to x by 100 times. If you take V2 out again, you have V1 by V2 minus 1 actually. Okay. So if you simplify this, V2, V2 gets cancelled. This is the cutoff ratio, rho V3 by V2 minus 1 is equal to x by 100 times of this is the compression ratio minus 1. So this is the equation normally to calculate cutoff if compression ratios are given and cutoff is told. Like let's say if I tell you cutoff is at 7% of the stroke, okay, then x is equal to 7 and r is equal to let's say for example in this since the fuel is has to self ignite the compression ratios are high as compared to auto engines. Compression ratios in case of diesel is normally like 12 to 18 in general okay so 12 to 18 normally 16 15 is the ratios that we typically use and in case of autos it is like 8 to 12 okay so 12 to 18 or 12 to sometimes in some high piloting inject engines you can see it goes up to even 24 also 12 to 24 okay so that's why it has very high compression ratios and this is the relation between the cutoff and also the compression ratio clear so anyway the time is up i guess so in tomorrow's class we'll start this analysis with the help of diesel cycle i mean we'll start the analysis with diesel cycle then we'll see compare auto and diesel of our same compression ratios for same peak pressure certain things are there using ts diagrams and logics we'll compare then we'll start vapor power cycles okay clear so is it understandable to you And normally you can see, once we do the thermodynamic analysis, we will get the thermal efficiency as, of course, I will show you in tomorrow's class, meanwhile you can give a try how this is coming, 1 minus 1 by r power gamma minus 1 into rho power gamma minus 1 by gamma times rho minus 1. This is what you will get as the expression for thermal efficiency of this cycle, clear? You can just give it a try because you know how to convert this PV into TS, so again, 1 minus QR by QS if you apply. Q reduction is happening in constant volume and Q supply is happening in constant pressure. So you can just use TDS equations and try to get this relation. Okay. So please do this as your homework. Try this. Anyhow, in tomorrow's class, I'll just give you a glimpse of how this comes. Okay. Is the content going too deep? Is that what you're feeling? How many of you are feeling the content is going a bit deep actually? Like in case of maximum work output, then here and explanation of this part. Be because you know today is the first class of this IC engine, so conversion of this cycle to year standard cycles needs a bit of understanding. Okay, so that's why you took some time. Clear? And all these conditions are really, you know, uh, nice conditions to talk about. These conditions. Okay, so fine then. If things are fine, then we will uh, clo close this lecture here. I have set some uh, set up some problems also to solve, but anyway, the time is not uh, sufficient a bit. But you can try these questions. This is about diesel engine, but anyway, this is about auto. You can just give it a try in tomorrow's class. I think the answer for this is uh, I didn't remember actually. So we'll solve tomorrow maybe. But meanwhile, you can try. I'll keep these questions as it is. Okay. So in today's class, we are talking about auto cycle, basics of IC engines, basics of IC engines, like how different cycles can be generated. Then in tomorrow's class, we'll also start diesel cycle. Of course, we have started. We'll do a bit of math, mathematical analysis again in diesel cycle. And uh, that's what you have. Okay. So we'll, we are going in this way. and that's it okay so again i'm telling you if some of you wish to join this group you can join if you have any doubts you can discuss over there okay so that's it from my side for today because the time is up otherwise we would have finished diesel cycle also are you all understanding things definitely some of you might be learning this or uh, some of you might be learning few logics for the first time definitely i know so but everything, when we are drawing a line, when we are putting some curve, it has certain logic, okay? It's nothing like, just take it for granted. Clear? If I'm drawing a line in this shape, why I'm putting it this way? Why I'm drawing that line? Why physically what's happening? All these things has to be 
understood thanks for all the love symbols going thank you yeah i hope all of you are liking the session okay so liking in sense not the like button uh, i mean the content okay that's what good division is going on okay it's going very well fine then okay so we'll main try to maintain the same pace and uh, yeah we'll try to close the things by two weeks approximately okay any doubts any doubts nothing no doubts yeah if you have no doubt then it's fine that's it okay so thank you all we'll meet tomorrow again at 4 pm we'll try to finish diesel and duel and we'll start vapor power cycles okay yeah thank you yeah take care all of you bye we'll meet at 4 pm tomorrow thank you